hi, <coughs> excuse me, I've got, just hit puberty. Um, hi guys, I am this week talking um, about depression specifically slash bipolar type 2 that I have. Um, currently I'm in a good-ish place, yeah, an okay place. Um, but last week was a kind of an overall... Um, video this week I'm, I'm going to try and sort of keep it more contained and spe uh, specific um, so just uh, briefly um, over the Christmas period I had um, 12 days a 12 day stint of a depressive episode or a depressive event and that was probably down to a lot of it down to change um, in my life um, and uh, the unsteadiness and unease of what's going on in my life and also spending uh, my birthday and Christmas alone didn't help. Um, at the time, during the event or the episode, whatever you, you want to call it, um, you feel like you're, you don't realise really, you, you, you don't realise until after the fact what had, what had just occurred. Um, you don't recognise the person that you were during this time. And during the event, it's you get this self of, um, sense of abandonment from um, your body, like a, a disconnect from your actual self to yourself, if that makes any sense to anyone, I don't, maybe. Um, isolation and loneliness. Um, all this stuff that's with deep down within you come out the the, 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 the dark stuff um, there's a song in a uh, called uh, dancing on glass and it have, has a line um, how long till we find the devil inside of us and that's like really poignant because depression is about the dark it's not light it's not an easy topic it's not a nice joyful topic to talk about it's not um it's not an enjoyable experience when you have these episodes or events on average they go from 10 to 21 days um in a row um but it, i call like this depression but bipolar 2 is um it's a fine line between whether or not my bipolar is playing up or it's just plain outright depression um, I shouldn't be getting any um, depressive episodes because of all the medication I'm on but I'll save that for another um, another video but um, the, when all these dark thoughts come from within somewhere and they come and your brain is registering you're hearing these things in your own head you they're the they're the realist and they, they feel like the most real and honest thoughts that you've ever had in your entire life. And you believe it. You, 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 it more so than when you're in, without, out of a depressive episode and someone says something to you or you think of something and you're like, yeah, that's, you know, say the sky is blue. You know the sky is blue, but when you're in a depressive episode, the sky will be black and everyone will be saying it's blue but you'll be like no it's black I, like I genuine like that's how it feels um <clears throat> and the other side of it is also it's exhausting because this is this is ruminate rumination it's, it goes round and round and round and round and round and it just does not give up not when you're in bed asleep or trying to get to sleep not when you're asleep because the nightmares come not when you wake up because you look at yourself and you judge yourself and you think oh my god i've put on so much weight oh my hair's terrible whatever you just judge yourself and, it, and then all the other things come and it snowballs like a, like an avalanche um so bipolar 2 is like so uh, for me like bipolar 2 is generally there's no mania so i'm not manically like hyper hyperactive um but i'm more, I'm more so than my usual self and then the then the lows is where i'm at risk the most because the lows are, are pretty pretty low um 
So it's hard to see because after this 12 days of depression that I had over Christmas, and I've just realised 12 days of depression, 12 days of Christmas and 12 days of depression. Um, after I had that, I only had two above hyper days. Um, and uh, then I, I kind of went down to sort of a... a a plateau level where I've been okay since um, but more on that in a bit um, so the general feelings is isolation loneliness sadness um, and then there's self-judgment and self-criticism self-criticism um, but I think generally speaking depression affects most depression sufferers have the core standard I don't want to say standard but you know the core um, feelings and and emotions that come with it um, we just all call it different things mine I've referred to as um, my inner darkness or um, my inner saboteur or um, I really liked when I listened to this song, that song the other uh, the other day, um, "The Devil Inside of, of Me," um, which I I liked, even though I'm not religious, but um, because it's it has that relationship, you know, what you signify as the devil. What do you think of when you see think of the devil when someone says to you, "Describe me what the devil looks like" or whatever, or you know, you don't think of it living uh, the devil living in this, you know bright sunshine green grass beautiful sands beautiful oceans um so anyway um it it's fed through ourselves it's in our minds and not being able to cope and not knowing how to cope or where to go because you do feel so alone that you don't think anyone is out there that that, that can help um, that is in fact not true. The, the moment you start talking about it, the moment it, it's almost immediate that it releases some sort of pressure from within. Me doing these the videos, um, it, it's a kind of therapy for me as well. More so now because I'm not actually I've not been in therapy for a, for a little while, and I really need to get back into. I need to go back to therapy, and I've also let my my other practices slip which has also um, affected my mood. Um, and then what you end up doing is you see the, the curated versions of ourselves on Facebook, social media generally. Uh, social media has a lot to chance for. Everyone can deal with their social media accounts as best as, as, as they want. But the, the, the curation of putting your, the best version of yourself and we do this in everyday life as well. We put the best version of ourselves to other people. And when you, when I've got depression, I, I'm not very good at presenting myself in the best way possible. I will, um, I will um, go silent. I will withdraw. Uh, withdrawing is my main one, I would say. Um, I won't reply to anyone. If I do, I'll be quite abrupt, or I'll say I'm fine. Now, to a, to a sufferer of depression, <clears throat> it is okay not to be okay. And to those that don't suffer with depression, or do suffer with depression, but see someone else that they think may may be having a hard time, or whatever, or may may be struggling with something or other. Um, Saying to them it's okay not to be okay is not enough. Like it's great that you can say that, but for me personally, I don't. Just because you're saying it's okay not to be okay, it does not make me feel like I I can come to you and and speak openly about my my the things that I'm struggling with. So, um, just some advice if, for anyone that's watching is that um, if you look for the signs in 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 people that may seem like they're struggling they're they're withdrawing from your friendship they're isolating themselves they're not coming to work as often they're when they are at work they're not really present or 
um, they're abrupt and short. I mean, these are these are my kind of key points, but you might see uh, th different things in other people. It's okay not to be okay, but it's it. You've also got to act on that and ask ask them if they're okay. I'm here if you if 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 you want to talk. Reassure them that they are aware you are there for them because they they in their heads no one's there for them and they you don't want to you also feel like partly a burden on someone but when you're encouraged by someone to to to, to speak it's slightly easier because you know oh this person loves me and they want me to open up so you know um so I mean that's really pretty much sums up um, pretty much sums up the depression side of things for me. Um, there's probably some other things that I've written down that I wanted to. Um... The only thing is that, like I'll I'll I'll, um, I'll just emphasise is this this when you're in a depressive episode. If you feel like your your the world around you is just crumbling around, crumbling down, and you have absolutely no idea how to deal with it, you do not have the tools in in your brain in your toolbox to deal with what you feel is is just coming down on you, and it's it's really really dangerous. Because that's when suicidal thoughts come can come in. Because you feel so sad and alone. Because your self worth is minuscule. Um, and because of the devil, so to speak, inside, is it always telling you really bad stuff, really bad shit about yourself, about how you feel, the friendships that you have, the relationships with your family that you have. And it can lead into self-harm. For me, <clears throat> I was self-harming back in, uh, for the first half of last year, um, uh, about eight, eight occasions or something. Um, and it was to relieve the pressure in my head of how like how much pain I was feeling within hurting my arm cutting my arm meant that it the the release of pressure from my head my the pain was drawn away from what was going on up here to what was going on my arm now this is not okay this like you should not do this um, and I have since used other skills to prevent me from doing this but my point here is that you know that it goes, it, it, it starts at self-harm. And then it was suicidal thoughts, or suicidal thoughts and self-harm. Suicidal thoughts, and then acting on a suicidal thought and taking an overdose. So <clears throat> it's really important for people to know that they've got someone to talk to. And it's it's a great, you know, it's okay not to be okay. Yes, we can say it. It's like saying I love you. But I love you isn't enough. You have to actions speak louder than words and you know and putting that sort of out there to someone that you know is struggling hey you know you're okay um i'm here if you ever want to talk or sending them a message whatever um so i finally i want to um just say here's a couple of um tips <clears throat> So um, I got out of mindfulness practice uh, a few weeks ago. I I'd lost my way a bit, so I've restarted that recently. Fantastic app called um, Calm, C-A-L-M, Calm app, um, that does all types of um, mindfulness practices and meditations. And all it takes is 10 minutes, 10 minutes a day, or I, I listen to it before I go to bed. I listen to a story. Um, before I go to bed and you just find it helps you mindfulness practice is something you, any, anyone and everyone can do in every single thing they're doing I can be very mindful doing this video 
or walking down the streets, paying attention to the leaves on the floor, the wind touching my face, the, the leaves in the tree, etc., etc. Just constantly, if you can do that, you find yourself not thinking about all the other stuff that's going on. Um, so, the, yeah, mindfulness, which I'll probably come to again in another video. Um, if you have thoughts of self-harm, uh, a very good technique is getting an ice cube. Uh, if no ice cubes in your freezer, then a bag of peas, whatever, petit pois, go for it. Just, and hold on, hold it tight. As tight as you can, this ice cube, and then, and you'd be surprised at how much that stings. Um, one of the other things that I went and did once, uh, instead of self-harming, I went and got a wax <laughs> on my body. Uh, that certainly did the trick. <laughs> um, and um, so, um, and then put safeguarding measures in place. Uh, you know, a letter, a note in your knife drawer uh, with steps, you know, uh, I will call so-and-so. I will call so-and-so. I will use an ice cube. Call my therapist, whatever. Um, and yeah, so <clears throat> mindfulness and that. Um, and I'll probably talk about some other stuff in the next video or two. Okay, um, that's about it, I think, on depression. So that was fun. Yay! Um, and I'll um, do another one next week. Bye!